say something that may not be great politics, but I think the Secretary is right. And that is that the American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. It is perhaps not exactly the one quote that everybody expected Bernie Sanders to say to Hillary Clinton in the Democratic debate. It might have been even better had he said, get off my damn lawn. But instead he went for the emails, the night was cooking, and now everybody's trying to figure out who won and who those guys were on the other side of the debate, by the way, in case you're wondering. For Wednesday, October 14th, 2015, welcome in, everybody. I'm Ed Berliner, and this is The Hardline from Washington, D.C. Uh, everybody here, of course, all day, all night, still talking about the fallout. Now let's go ahead and find out from the real experts. First up, let us welcome contributor from Forbes, also co-host of The Daily Rep, writer on Newsmax, weeknights, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Rick Unger. Oh, this is going to be fun. And Daniel Halper is the <laughs> online editor of The Weekly Standard and also, uh, also author of Clinton, Inc. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. All right, Mr. Unger, I'm going to begin right with you. Get off my damn lawn. Get off my damn emails. People are actually thinking, some believe Bernie Sanders won this debate. Oh, Mr. Unger, please set us straight. Well, I think Bernie Sanders did really well, but so did Hillary Clinton. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure who I would choose among the two of them as the winner. My suspicion is you won't see a considerable change in their polling numbers uh, in either direction, because I think they both performed extremely well. Is it not fair to say, though, that Hillary Clinton, much more polished, came across, got her message yes. across, even if some people would say there wasn't a lot of truth in it, those would be the detractors, but she was able to grab the audience, though. Agreed? She was, and, and Hillary certainly accomplished what she needed to do last night, but you got to remember, Bernie Sanders is not your normal politician. People know who he is, how he acts, and, you know, the one thing he showed again last night which for those of us who have known him and followed him from years already knew, he is a stand-up guy. He really is. His answer on the email thing, what he had to say was extraordinary and good for him. He's a stand-up guy. He doesn't play a lot of politics. He tells you what he thinks. And that's why for his base, for the people who have been following him, he delivered big time. And who knows? He may have picked up on some people who didn't know him before if they appreciated that kind of behavior. But both of them, they really did. Hillary accomplished what she needs to do. So did Bernie. Daniel, it's fair to say that, as Rick just mentioned, that Bernie Sanders spoke to his base. There's no doubt. The people who wanted Bernie Sanders before still love him after how he performed last night. But in your opinion, did he do enough to grab those who aren't Bernie Sanders fans, to grab somebody from Hillary Clinton, from Martin O'Malley, or somebody who's not quite sure? Well, let's be clear. Martin O'Malley doesn't have any to grab from. There are, it's, right. it's a three-person race. <laughs> as we look I was at. trying to, here I am just trying to be nice, and you had to go ahead and bring reality into it, okay? Yeah, listen, <laughs> yeah I, I get I to agree with Dan he, right out. I thought if he were half a decent candidate, he'd be able to put up a fight. Obviously, that's not the case. It's a, basically a three-person race. We have Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and Joe Biden. Now, Joe Biden hasn't... Wait a minute, who? who? A, a, excuse me, excuse me. Who? Joe, Joe, Joe. Who is this Joe Biden you speak of? <laughs> exactly. He's the sitting vice president of the United States, and he's, con he's considering, by his own admission, entering the race, but he hasn't yet. But nonetheless, he's taking up a certain portion of Democratic voters at this time. Between Hillary and Clinton, the people on the debate stage, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, did they, the key question is, did they lose supporters? I don't think a single one did. I think if you've gone through all of Hillary's scandals and you still support her and you went into last night's debate, debate watching it, I don't think you could have looked at Hillary Clinton and said, She's lost my vote now after all everything that's happened. Bernie Sanders, he's a bit eccentric, obviously. He's a self-described uh, socialist. I don't think if you followed him and you liked him, I don't think he did anything to lose you yesterday. So the key now is Biden. What happens to those voters, you know, about 20, depending on which poll you look at, so maybe 15% of the voters, what happens to those votes? If Biden enters, and, it, and if he enters, it will have to be in the next week or two, so we all assume, what happens to those voters if he, if he enters, and what happens to those voters if he doesn't enter? And I think that's the key question. And so, in a way, I don't really think last night's debate mattered that much. I don't think it's going to factor into the way Biden's looking at the race. I don't think it's going to factor into the way voters on the Democratic side are looking into the race. It needs to either 
firm up and have three people or narrow down and have only two people and then subsequent debate, subsequent actions by the campaign can matter. But it was important, I should add, that Hillary Clinton didn't stumble out of the gate, that she was able to reassure her supporters that she was okay. And it's all, I mean, same with Bernie. It's very important not to lose supporters along the way as you're trying to pick up new ones. And so in that regard, I think they were successful. Rick, let's turn to the very one accurate, comment, of course, I, when we played coming in. Oh, wait, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you get in there. Now, I was just going to say, I thought that was very reasoned and, and accurate uh, analysis of what took place. I will add one thing. What, what did strike me, there appeared to be a slot somewhere between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton on certain issues where I thought, boy, that's where the vice president would fit right in. He would fit right in between them in that slot. That might have encouraged him last night, but I've got a funny feeling overall, as he was sitting there watching it and not seeing Hillary stumble, if anything, she's solidified, uh, I think it probably puts more pressure on him to not come into the race after what he saw. But well, I would wait not a minute. Let me go ahead and question that. that then, because I, I want to question on that, Rick, because if you look, let's take Bernie Sanders out of the mix. There was nobody else on that stage last night. There really isn't. So if... That's right. The Democratic Party is looking for someone, someone to challenge Hillary Clinton. All these scandals that are sitting around her right now, wouldn't Biden then be the logical choice with what you alluded to and what people are knowing that he could come in and he could be a really hard debater, really get some good issues. He could draw her out and find the flaws. Yes. Those are fair points. They really are. But there's one thing that I, I think we in the media have a tendency to do. I think we may be overstating and overestimating the scandal element. As I talk to Democrats out there, those who support Hillary, not so much those who support Bernie, uh, they're not as bugged by the email thing as maybe they should be. Uh, but they're certainly not as hot and bothered about it as we in the media are and as the Republicans understandably are. If the email thing leads to some action by the Justice Department, everything I just said goes out the window. Different scenario. But if it doesn't, then I think we make too much of it and Hillary will blow right past it. But Mike, Daniel, let me get to you here with regard to the, the comment that we made, because I want to make sure that right at the top we talked about the emails here. In your opinion... Did Bernie Sanders miss a chance here? I mean, let's face it, he was the nice guy that he said he would be. But as far as people know, insiders, Hillary Clinton will have no compunction whatsoever to go after Bernie Sanders if it gets down and dirty. And in this time, didn't he miss an opportunity, instead of just saying nice things, to go after it a little bit, make some news? She did go after him on guns and on other issues last night. No, 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 I'm talking about him going after Bernie Sanders going after Hillary on the emails. Yeah. He was very nice to her about it. Don't, don't yeah. do that. Go after her. She'll come after him anytime she wants. Exactly, as she did a little bit last night. But my point being is that I think that was Bernie's way of saying, hey, guys, I might be a crazy old man, but I am human, too, and I can sort of relate to you, and I can put the Democratic Party to, around us, and I can sort of unite us. Uh, that's sort of the kindest way to look at it, that it was sort of a smart move in, in that regard. My sense, though, watching watching him in particular, but also all the other candidates, is that in the back of their minds, they know Hillary Clinton's going to be the Democratic nominee, and they don't want to annoy her. They don't want to alienate the future standard bearer of the Democratic Party. So they'd rather kind of suck up to her and kind of be nice to her. And, you know, because look, if she becomes president one day and you're Bernie Sanders and you want to get your agenda, you want to have favors, or you want to be ambassador to Senegal or something like that, you're going to want to be nice to the president of the United States. And I think it's, I think they're trying to curry a little favor at the very least. I think a lot of them are trying to uh, hedge their bets at this moment. But I think Rick, let me go ahead and hit that. I got about a minute left. But do you agree with that, that that's where we're sitting at right now? The other three, forget them, throw them off the stage right now. No disrespect, men, but they have no chance. And at this point, how strong Hillary Clinton was, get behind her, start creating that flow, that tide, if you will, to get ready for November. Well, I agree with the analysis I just heard. I think it might be, yeah, you can get rid of the other three, although you probably won't. I suspect there will be three people. If we're not including the vice president the next time, I think that O'Malley will probably stick in. But, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I've heard all this analysis over whether Dern Bernie did the right thing, the wrong thing. I think Bernie just did what came naturally to him, and it was no more calculated than that. Maybe good, maybe bad. But, yes, as we move along these way too few Democrats,
Democratic debates. It's going to be all about Bernie and Hillary and uh, and Joe Biden, obviously, if he gets in. I'm becoming, and I'm a Biden fan. I'm becoming a little more convinced he won't, and I'll probably live to regret those words. All right. Well, trust me, there's nothing that Rick Unger will ever live to regret, even though we have a lot of things on tape. We promise that we're going to keep them all hidden, Rick. So really, you're going to be OK from here. Daniel the Halper from the Weekly Standard. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it, Rick. We're having the best of Rick Unger. We're getting it all ready. So right come election night, we can have everything set. Don't sweat. We're ready for you. And Rick Unger, don't forget My kids have uh, the Daily Wrap contribute. weeknights, <laughs> 6 p.m. Eastern time, right around Newsmax. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. We will continue. Grover Norquist is going to join us to talk about a very specific issue regarding Hillary Clinton. That's coming up from Washington, D.C., right here on The Hardline.